very sad story. Lucinda Smith, 43-year-old uh, solicitor, uh, died from sepsis uh, five days after scratching her hand gardening. She started feeling pain in her shoulder, went to see her GP, was sent away with a prescription to ease the pain and relax her, and then told to see a physiotherapist three days later to continue... Uh, the condition continued to worsen. She went to A and E, where a simple blood test confirmed that she'd uh, contracted sepsis. Um, she was given intravenous antibiotics immediately. Died two days later, and her family have only just spoken out about this tragic death. But they said it could have been avoided if the GP she saw had initially given her that quick mm. blood test. Well, you know, it, it's it's difficult without knowing the full details of the case. Uh, I mean, I, I was thinking about the GP. You know, seeing this patient who came in complaining of a painful shoulder. Well, actually, was it a painful shoulder? Was it painful glands under the armpit or in the neck? We don't know the full picture here. Mm -hmm. And certainly patients coming in here with painful shoulders, you're not going to be doing the blood test for sepsis. Because the, the, one of the blood tests... 44,000 people might have appreciated that blood test. Well, 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 and this is the one thing... Oh, yeah, this is the one thing we have to understand. This is a massive problem. Mm. Uh, you know, we're talking about, what, over 800 people a week dying from sepsis. People know about breast cancer, bowel cancer, prostate cancer, but they don't know about so sepsis. what is it then? Well, basically, it's um, the, the body's immune system goes into overdrive in trying to fight an infection. Now, that infection could be anything, like the scratch on her hand, a sore throat, chest infection, a water infection, and the immune system just produces widespread inflammation across the body, which kills the body's own tissues and organs, and eventually, you, know, you can get um, multiple organ failure, kidney, heart, Gosh. lungs, liver, failing and, and death ensuing. Wait, because the, the facts are, 150,000 people affected Years. We said 44,000 people die. Yeah. 26,500, a quarter of all survivors suffer permanent life changing after effects. Yeah, and some of them can be nasty because with sepsis, uh, when it gets to an advanced stage, severe sepsis or septic shock, it's known as, you can get the circulation just clumping down and they get gangrene, black fingers, yeah. toes, and they end up having amputation. So you, even if you survive, you, well, I mean, a lot of people survive and they're fine, but if you, if you survive and you've got these adverse effects, th these are lifelong disabilities. So what are the symptoms of it? Because it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because there's lots of symptoms that could be linked to other things. Now, this is the problem, of course, right? But the sort of classic early symptoms. Now, abnormal temperature. We used to say high fever. Now we're finding that patients can either have a high fever Fever or a very low temperature right. and they feel cold. So a high temperature is over 38, a low temperature is under um, 36. So in other words, if they're very hot or they're very cold, that might be one of the symptoms. Chills and shivering, we call them rigors. You can't control them. You just, whether you're hot or cold, you get that. Fast heartbeat, fast breathing. This is a very important one. Your breathing just is not under control. And then confusion, drowsiness, lethargy. Okay. So with those symptoms, um, you know, I I is it sepsis? Well, it could be. It could be other things as well, but I think we have to be aware of this. And there's going to be a big campaign this autumn uh, to heighten the awareness of sepsis amongst doctors as well as the public. And the question is, you know, could it be sepsis? Whatever's going wrong, could it be sepsis? What are the more severe symptoms? Well, the more severe symptoms, I mean, can be very varied indeed. You know, diarrhea and vomiting, severe muscle pains, um, urine output dropping, cold, clammy skin uh, and mottled skin, and even a rash like the, the rash of meningitis, which you've described before, but they're late signs. But, so by the time that crops up, then you're in trouble. That, yeah, that's dire emergency. But mm. even with those early symptoms, I think you go along to A&E and, &E and, and get it checked. could it be sepsis? And how would they diagnose it then? You were asking the question, could it be? How do they know? Yeah, now basically, uh, if the doctor's thinking it's sepsis, you, you, you take various blood tests, checking for inflammation around the body. But one test is blood culture. You take the blood, send it to the lab where it's cultured for bacteria. If it finds the bacteria in your bloodstream, they know which bacteria it is, 
what antibiotics you're sensitive to, and then you start, they start you on IV, intravenous antibiotics, IV fluids and oxygen. But delaying the administration of treatment, you know, beyond an hour after diagnosis starts increasing the risk of death. So what, what sort of time scale are you on then? Well, I, I think if you're going into hospital and they, they are suspecting sepsis, they're not going to mess about. They're going to get these tests done rapidly and probably within an hour you're going to be getting intravenous antibiotics. antibiotics in. You had it yourself, didn't you? Yeah, I, yeah, I did. Oh, boy. I just woke up in the middle of the night gasping for breath. So that short, quick breathing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I couldn't understand what was going on. I was fine the day before, and, and I'm, I'm trying to tell my wife, Monica, to call ambulance. I can't even say 999. And then I, I got the shivers and the shakes, and then I was going sort of semi-conscious. But it was a 999 job in the hospital, the right treatment, and three, four what days later. What caused it? Well, the bug they found was E. coli, which, you know, is very common bacteria in right. our bodies. We all have it in our colon, E. coli from the colon, and it can cause problems. It's a common cause of urinary tract infection, cystitis in women. E. coli is a very common cause. It had just got out of my <laughs> intestines into my bloodstream and then and started re it. wreaking So it doesn't have it. to be a scratch, it can be so many other things. Well, that's right, it could be anything. And, of course, you don't want to scaremonger people, but because of the number of deaths here, 44,000... Good to be aware. Got to be aware. Could it be sepsis? That's the question. And is, you're quite within your rights to go to your... If you've got any of those... Um, uh, particular symptoms to go to your doctor and say, I'd like the blood test, please? Yeah, I mean, the GP is going to decide on that. I think if you're getting most of those symptoms, uh, to be honest, I would yeah. go to A&E. All right, okay. thank you, Chris.